So instead of an intelligent conversation, the Democrats use cynical manipulation. Make it count. Let the voters govern. Our democratic system makes you the cop. This is uh, part four in a series on inside DFL election corruption. I'd like to introduce you to uh, a, an agent, an uh, employee of Laurie Swanson, uh, whose name is Nathan Hartshorn. Uh, Mr. Hartshorn has been involved in this uh, since uh, before the election, uh, representing Mark Ritchie, uh, whose response this is. And this is a piece. This is not like the little flimsy ones. This is taxpayer dollars uh, trying to block free and fair elections in Minnesota. And this is on behalf of the DFL. These are all DFL elected officials, and this is how they spend your taxpayer dollars. And Mark Ritchie, by the way, is not only the Secretary of State and Chief Elections Officer, but as such also leads the uh, Minnesota State Board of Canvassing, who certified the results on November 27th. And Mr. Hartshorn and Mark Ritchie argue this court lacks jurisdiction over Stephen W. Carlson's petition for two reasons. First, his petition is moot. We've already discussed that issue. And second, the law petitioner seeks to base his petition on concerning mandamus requests, ballot error petitions, and requests for declaratory judgment does not provide this court with jurisdiction under the facts alleged in the petition. And I'm just going to jump to some of those facts as, as uh, the Secretary of State sees them. Petitioner Stephen W. Carlson was the Independence Party candidate for the United States House of Representatives in Minnesota's 4th Congressional District in the November 12th general election. Uh, petitioner also ran for the 4th Congressional District uh, seat in 2010. He has expressed his intention to do the same in 2014. Respondent Mark Ritchie, the Secretary, is the Minnesota Secretary of State. B, the election. Of the 347,991 votes cast in the November 6, 2012 general election for the United States uh, representative from the 4th Congressional District, Petitioner received 21,135 votes, or 6.07 percent of the total. He finished third out of three candidates on the ballot, behind Democratic nominee Betty McCollum, 216,685 votes, 62.27 percent, and Republican nominee Tony Hernandez, 109,659 votes, or 31.51 percent. Write-in candidates received the remaining 512 votes, 0.15 percent. On November 27th, the Secretary convened a meeting of the State Canvassing Board at which the Board certified the results of the November 6th general election. C. Contest proceedings or lack thereof. Under Minnesota state law, any election contest involving the November 2012 general election was required to be filed in Ramsey County Court and served on the contestee and the secretary on or before December 4th, 2012. That's Minnesota Statutes 209.021 subdivisions 1 to 3. In congressional elections, this deadline is especially important because of the need for the secretary to transmit certificates of election for Minnesota's congressional delegation to the clerk of the House of Representatives in time for each member representing Minnesota to be seated. Certificates of election for United States representatives in districts 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 8 were issued on December 5, 2012. On December 5th, one day after the relevant statutory deadline, petitioner served the secretary with a copy of his election contest. The secretary's counsel thereupon contacted Ramsey County Court administrators and learned that petitioner 
has tried and failed to file his contest in district court on December 4th. Now, of course, I did not fail. Because of petitioner's twin failures to timely, one, file his contest in Ramsey County District Court, and two, serve the secretary, the secretary's counsel informed petitioner that the secretary would not be responding to the election contest. Five days later, on December 10th, with no response received to the Hartshorn letter, no contest filed either before or after the December 4th deadline, and no indication of any attempt to appeal. The Secretary issued Representative McCollum's Certificate of Election and sent it, along with the certificates for Minnesota's other House members, to the Clerk of the United States House of Representatives. This transmission fulfilled the Secretary's duty under state and federal law. See Minnesota Statutes 204C.40, Subdivision 1, 2012, and 2, United States Code 26, 2012. On January 3rd, 2013, Representative McCollum was sworn in with the rest of the 113th United States Congress. D. Facts pertaining to petitioner's claim regarding voter email addresses. 1. The Statewide Voter Registration System, or SVRS. Prior to the 2012 general election, Petitioner acquired information about his would-be constituents by buying from Respondent Secretary a compilation of data culled from the Statewide Voter Registration System. The SVRS is a Help America Vote Act, or HAVA, compliant statewide centralized voter registration computer database that is used by Minnesota's counties and the Office of Secretary of State and DFLR Mark Ritchie and the rest of his party. This is Minnesota Statutes 201.021, which reads, in pertinent part, a permanent system of voter registration by county is established with a single official centralized interactive computerized statewide voter registration list, and 201.022, 2012, providing requirements for the system. Pursuant to state statute, Minnesota voter registration applications allow, but do not require, registrants to provide an email address. Minnesota Statutes 201.071, Subdivision 1, 2012. And for all candidates, and parties, and interested voters out there, you should be aware that under our law, you can acquire this list and use it in elections. And you should. And it would make elections a lot better instead of just selling these lists as the secretary promotes for a million, multi-million dollar industry. You can make a democratic use of those. Now, voter email addresses, quote, and now what I'm going to read now is a false statement, a lie um, submitted by Richie's uh, subordinates. Quote, are provided for the use of election officials should there be questions about the registration and if it becomes necessary to contact the registrant to obtain further information with respect to their registration application." Unquote. This is from a false affidavit of Gary Poser, who is the statewide elections director, but who works for DFLer Mark Ritchie. This is the Poser affidavit. Now email addresses that uh, voters voluntarily provide on their registration applications are entered into the SVRS, but those data are not made available to the public, and Poser also uh, attested to that. Uh, however, I will post the application right here. And you'll see that people are providing that just because it's asked for just like the telephone. Now, by the way, I have in my possession 382,000 telephone numbers for every registered voter in the 4th Congressional District, uh, Washington County out to uh, the St. Croix River. And I could call any of those people up, but I don't have the time to make 380,000 phone calls. But I could rather quickly email all of those voters who have uh, supplied these. Now, there's no reason to believe 
that voters who could receive a phone call, which could be very intrusive, uh, would be any would have any kind of problem with uh, receiving an email from a candidate during the time of an election. In fact, many people seek out information about the candidates in order to make a better informed decision. I could easily have provided the link to my website, which is www. Steve Carlson for Congress 2010. There's no reason uh, at all why when you submit your email address you would just be looking to see if somebody wanted to contact you about whether you could vote or not from the Secretary of State's office. Uh, that is not the way in which you get to vote. And I think everybody knows that. If this is what they're proposing that you have to have an email address so that it's a way that they can contact you to tell you whether you can vote or not. I think that is a very big story out of Mark Ritchie's office. Now, now I want to say something about this uh, affidavit from Gary Poser. The, the Poser affidavit, which is filed with the Minnesota Supreme Court, was originally a submission by the secretary and his co-defendant in the federal lawsuit that petitioner filed against them seven days before the 2012 general election, several days. That's Carlson versus Ritchie, court file number 12CV2780, District of Minnesota, initiated October 30th, 2012. This is regarding the public information list. As provided by state law, one particular subset of the data on the SVRS is called, quote, the public information list, unquote, Minnesota Statutes 201.091, Subdivision 4, 2012. State statute provides that the public information list, quote, must contain the name, address, year of birth, and voting history of each registered voter in the county. The telephone number must be included on the list if provided by the voter. The public information list may also include information on voting districts. Now, under state law, members of the public can access data on the public information list for certain enumerated purposes. Two of those are election-related activity and political activity. So it is allowed to be used very definitely for political activity. But even if it did not, the First Amendment would require that people could use it in order to carry out political activity. Because what would ban anybody from using telephone numbers which were made available to them from the list given the requirements of the United States Constitution First Amendment, which requires political association and free speech during the heat of an election campaign. Obviously, Betty McCollum uses this, so does Tony Hernandez, so do all the major party candidates. However, independent candidates and write-in candidates, they don't have big organizations, except in some cases like, say, Mark Dayton, who is able to defeat the uh, endorsed Margaret Kelleher in order to become the nominee for the Democratic Party for governor and now serves as governor. He has independent means. But most of us want the same access to this public information in order to conduct our campaigns as uh, the big party candidates like Betty McCollum and Tony Hernandez do. McCollum says she wants to fight for voting rights, but her party setting quotas for blacks and whites. She says she's representing all of Minnesota, but she really represents a Democrat quota. Up here we've always talked about integration, but today we're spreading quotas all across the nation. So instead of an intelligent conversation, the Democrats use cynical manipulation. Make it count. Let the voters govern. Our democratic system makes you decide.